Or if you aren't loaded with money, there is plenty to do on a budget. Out of 2.8 million people, only around 700,000 are women. Well, I don't know if this qualifies as a mountain range with elevations of up to 90 meters. See, they can remind us of lakes, but they aren't. I make travel and geography related videos and today we're going to zoom in on the first and only Q country in the world. We're zooming in on... Got it! Yes, got it is the right pronunciation. But I don't think it's wrong to say Qatar. Let's zoom in! Qatar lies in Western Asia on the Arabian Peninsula, lying on its own peninsula, the Qatar Peninsula. It shares a land border with only one other country, Saudi Arabia. And on all other sides, the country is surrounded by the Persian or Arabian Gulf. A really close country though is Bahrain, separated by the Gulf of Bahrain. And especially here, Bahrain comes really close. Other close neighbors are United Arab Emirates and on the other side of the Gulf, Iran. Some notable islands of Qatar is the Pearl Qatar, close to the capital city. This is a luxurious man-made island with malls, marinas, hotels. Close lie Al Safliya and Al Aliya Islands. Right outside of Hamad International Airport lies Banana Island, also man-made with a really large beach. And Shura Aba, a little further away from the mainland. The easternmost point, however, lies at Halul Island. The southernmost point lies here, touching Saudi Arabia. The westernmost point lies here, close to Dukan Public Beach. And the northernmost point lies on this island, Jazirat Ras Rakan. You've already guessed, Qatar belongs to the smaller countries in the world. Coming on number 158 in area, but still bigger than Trinidad and Tobago and Lebanon. With 2.8 million inhabitants, Qatar comes on place number 139 in population, about the same as the much bigger country, Namibia. The population density becomes 237 people per square kilometers, making Qatar come on number 39 in population density pretty much the same density as Germany. Life expectancy here is among the highest in the world. In 1960, life expectancy was 61.1 years. In 2018, it has risen to 80.1 years. That is 19 extra years to live. I wanna say something more on Qatar's population. Do you know what a population pyramid is? It is a diagram showing the distribution of the ages and genders of a population in a given country. Like, this is Mozambique's population pyramid. It looks like a pyramid because there are more children and young adults and then less and less older people. It has to do with life expectancy. Population pyramids can also look like this. This is from Iceland. There are more or less the same amounts of children as adults up until the age of 70 when more and more people die. This population pyramid gets more and more normal. But the reason that I'm bringing this up is because Qatar's population pyramid is really something else. Here it is. Look at it, very little children, very little old people. Most are between 20 and 50 years old. And look, there are many, many, many more men in Qatar than women. Out of 2.8 million people, only around 700,000 are women. And why is that? Qatar has many young male immigrants that come to Qatar for work. Many are working in infrastructure, so a big part of Qatar's inhabitants are not originally from Qatar. Many of which are working in the capital city Doha, lying at the east coast. Other cities are Arjayan, glued together with Doha, El Wakra, a little south of Doha, and further away from the capital city lies El Khor in the north. The official language here is Arabic, and since many people are immigrants who do not speak Arabic, English is also commonly used. Qatar in Arabic is Qatar. Let's explore the capital city first. Doha lies here on the east coast. It's a pretty large city. And here we can see the Corniche, waterfront promenade from where you can walk and see the sea. What have we here? Gold Souk, Souk Wakif, yeah. Marketplaces, Galleria Mall, Sofitel Doha Palace. What does that look like? Computer store, okay. Here are restaurants. Pak Pakwan, Umami Burger, Saida Bakery and Stores. Oh, look at this place. Look at that pattern, I like this. Oh, more food. Yasmin Thai, Zatar, Damaska One, Kebab. Hmm. And here it says Diplomatic Area. Oh yeah, Embassy of Pakistan, 
Jordanian embassy. And look at the shadows of these skyscrapers here. Let's see if we can see them. Oh no, that doesn't work. Oh well, lots of green areas here. Yeah, and up here we have this man-made islands. Are these houses? They look like houses. With pools, whoa. And they have boats. Okay, let's check out some other parts of Qatar. I see a place here called Film City. I wonder what that is. Film City. City representation. What is this? Movie theater. Wait, is this a place where they make movies? It's a movie studio. Oh, wow. So they do make movies here. Huh. I see this big black spot here. And I don't know what it is. I see the sand dunes here. Look, those really cool sand dunes. And then this becomes black and I don't know why. Could it be oil? Maybe it's just black sand? Maybe it's a type of rock that lies here? If you know, you are very welcome to let me know and comment here. Because I'm really curious to find out what it is. I don't see it has any name either. But I can see that cars have been driving across this place. Yeah, I really do wonder what this is. Let's check out this little town here. It all looks yellow. It's all deserts. Which is natural because there's very little rainfall here. What happens here? A laboratory? Got this solar technologies? Do they maybe have solar power here? Huh, what is this? This is a road going here, but what this what is this? Refinery? Oh, oil refinery. There's lots of oil industry going on here. That's where they got that money. Yes, of course. Got the gas. Yeah, gas as well. People come to work here in oil and gas. Here there's a gas station. And here is a port. Some boats. Yeah. And as always, let's start with the topography map. Yes, Qatar is generally flat and rocky, with elevations rising a little bit towards the center and near the west coast. And let's switch maps. Yes, what do you think? The dominating landscape is deserts. Most of the country consists of sand deserts, covered with sand and gravel. The eastern part of the country is dominated by smooth plains with fine-grained sand and dusts. Moving to the south, we can find sand dunes, especially here. Whoa, this looks really cool. Right north of these sand dunes lies the Inland Sea, or Hura el Ude, an inland of the Persian Gulf. Moving to the west coast, we have, well, I don't know if this qualifies as a mountain range, at least a hill range here in the west. This is called Jebel Naqsh, with elevations of up to 90 meters. This is what it looks like. This, however, is not where you can find the tallest point in Qatar. No, that is a little higher than 90 meters. It's 103 meters, or 338 feet. This is Qurayn Abu Abol. This is what it looks like. To compare, the Eiffel Tower is about three times as tall as this mountain. So it's not really a tough hike. Actually, it looks like you can drive up here. There is a road going up here. Qatar's coastline has gentle slopes towards the sea, and many islands have coral reef. The salty seawater gets into contact with the low-lying land, creating subgas, salt flats. There are many of these salt flats here on the southeast coast. See, they can remind us of lakes, but they aren't. The fact that there are many salt flats here in the south supports the theory that Qatar was once an island. Another one lies here, close to the town Dukan. This is called the Dukan Sabka, considered the largest inland Sabka in the Persian Gulf. Yes, most of the country is desert. The long summers have intense heat, with average high temperatures for July of 42 degrees Celsius. The coldest month is January, and the average high is 22 degrees Celsius. Why do I live in Norway? No, it can get too hot too. And there is little rainfall, which usually only falls during the winter months. But even though most of the country is desert and there is little rain, doesn't mean there isn't any life here. No, Qatar does have natural trees and shrubs, as you can see here. And actually, there have been recorded a total of 21 different species of mammals, like the protected Arabian oryx and Arabian gazelle. The Arabian gazelle is the only native gazelle species to Qatar who can enjoy drinking water in wadis seasonal rivers. It's opposite side time. I measure 20,000 kilometers from the capital city Doha, move it around the globe and we land of course in the middle of the Pacific Ocean but not far away from land. No, pretty close really. The closest land is the uninhabited Henderson Island, part of Pitcairn Islands, a British overseas territory.
Yes, if you want to visit Qatar, there is plenty to do for you there. As I've already mentioned, there are luxurious malls, grand hotels with the most luxurious suites, beach resorts, marinas to dock your boat, or if you aren't loaded with money, there is plenty to do on a budget. So first, three free things to do in Doha. Maybe you enter the country by air. So after a long flight, a good start might be to walk the Doha Corniche. This waterfront promenade is seven kilometers long. You don't have to walk the whole distance though, but it's a nice place for a walk. If you walk here, you even have a great view to the Doha skyline. And if you walk here on the other side, well, a closer view to the skyscrapers. Now, you're probably hungry and a free, well, almost free thing to do here if you want to buy something is to pay a visit to Souk Wakif. This is a traditional marketplace where you can buy clothes, spices, snacks, pots, apparently, anything. Another destination in Doha I want to mention is Aspire Park. This is the biggest park of the city and it is a great place to hang out with friends or have a picnic. Maybe enjoy some of the food you got at the souk. There are trees that offer shade and just the grass makes it cooler. Okay, but we also want to explore Qatar outside of Doha. Let's continue our Qatar experience by visiting the 100 meter deep sinkhole Dal El Misfit. This is the largest sinkhole in Qatar. Here, cavities in the earth got so big, they no longer could hold the land surface, creating a sinkhole. You can climb in here. This is probably much cooler than at the surface and it's free. On to the next destination, which is among the wetter activities here in Qatar, to the El Taquira Mangroves Forest. This is a wetland preserve with lots of plants, flamingos and lots of other birds. Perfect if you want to get away from the city. And the best way to experience this nature preserve is by kayak. Okay, I have one more travel destination for you. And this is probably uh, one of the things I would do if I ever came to Qatar. Yes, the sand dunes. You can rent a car, a car which easily drives through the sands. Perfect would be to see the sunset, then set up a tent maybe and see the stars and then wake up to the sunrise. Yeah, there are tour operators that can give you this experience. Okay, this costs a lot of money. I found a tour operator that can give you all of this for the price of 330 US dollars per person. But maybe if you make friends in Qatar, then maybe you can get something similar, cheaper. Qatar is definitely a unique little country with special quirks like man-made islands, literally man-made, as there are many more men than women here. The whole country is desert, but there is still wildlife. I would love to visit this place to learn even more. These were geographical facts on Qatar. And next time we're gonna go to the first P country to Portugal. And we're zooming out. Thank you for watching, guys.